Hi there, I'm Starpunk D. Welcome to my art lab. So today we're gonna discuss one sensitive topic, but I think it's important to talk about it because there's this mindset out there which is prevalent in the part of artistic community where I come from, which is post-Soviet artistic community. And there are several reasons why I think this is true, but I'm not gonna go into the reasons uh, in this video. Um, I'm just gonna name the mindset. And there's this idea that you have to hate your artwork, um, you have to disassemble it after you've done it, right? After you've finished your piece of art. You need to disassemble this piece of art into mistakes. You need to pick out all the mistakes that there are and you need to be aware of them and you need to hate your art for that, for containing mistakes. Otherwise, you're not going to learn, you're, you're not going to grow as an artist. And obviously, we all want to grow. This is a goal for many, many people who do art, yeah, to always be changing, always be growing, not getting stuck in one place. And that's very obvious, and that's a very natural desire, I think. But this mindset, which I think is really limiting, is prevalent. Um, on the territory where I grew up and I kind of see it also being widespread in the global artistic community and many artists say that they kind of look at their artwork that they finished like six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, like ten years ago, that they find their artworks cringy and not worth looking at. Um, it is not so prevalent in the global art community, but it's still there. I can still see it. I can still see these posts that some people feel ashamed of the mistakes they made while they were growing as artists. While I do think that the mistakes are indication of the existence of that very place to grow, and that if you're not making mistakes, it means that you're stuck in the comfort zone and not trying new things, which is also bad. For me, it's even worse than making art with a lot of mistakes. And I personally think that we grow by mistakes. And I wanted to address this, um, this kind of idea, but first I wanted to tell you um, sort of a personal story. When I just started doing art um, at about seventh grade, I think, I had this friend, and nowadays she, she was someone I would nowadays call as like an art buddy. And she wasn't a buddy for me. She was more of a vigorous art critic. And she had this sort of attitude towards her art as well. We were like drawing cartoonish characters, um, characters from Sailor Moon and... Pokemon and other anime style pictures and we would draw them every day at home and then bring them to school to show each other and we started uh, we, we then gave feedback to each other and the feedback on her side was more about the mistakes that I made and for me it was difficult because when I make art, my main purpose of that is not to impress anyone. It, it is to just um, express some kind of emotion and share some feelings and maybe create a cool character. And that's my main idea. And when I, when I hear feedback from people, that's what I want to hear from them first. I want them to address this side of my artwork, not whether my technique was cool enough, because usually I'm aware of my technique, I'm aware of my shortcomings as an artist, I, I want to grow as much as anyone probably, but it is not the mistakes that I'm interested in, because I can see many of them, and I, I can address them, but it's not the most important part for me. The most important part for me when I hear someone's feedback on my art is whether they felt something when they connected to my picture, whether they found the design interesting or the character appealing, some sort of this. And my friend, she was 
she was very scarce on that. But she was uh, very abundant. Her speech was very abundant when she talked about the mistakes that I made and the shortcomings of my pictures. So she always had this attitude, why do you even bring this? Why did you bring this? It's obviously not finished. It's obviously too raw and there are so many mistakes. You need to do it all over all over again. You need to destroy that one and, and start over. And she was very keen on destroying her artwork. She she's burned two volumes of her cell drawn manga. We 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 did draw manga back in those days and it was cringy, I must admit, it was not good quality manga. But back in those days, that was the best either of us could do. And she destroyed two volumes, two full volumes of her own manga, and I cannot imagine how devastating that must have felt for her. But she was determined uh, about that. She she said like, if I don't like it, it's not perfect. It's less than perfect. It has to go. It basically needs to be destroyed. And I kind of I got it was contagious this sort of attitude to, towards your own art. It was really contagious and. I started getting sick with it, not sick of it, because I, I got sick of it later, but I started um, in absorbing some parts of this mindset into myself, and I got intoxicated by this mindset, and I started deleting my own sketches when I went digital, right, I started delete, deleting many sketches that I wasn't happy with, and I started throwing away some scrap paper sketches and I, it was very hard for me to keep a sketchbook because that meant that I would have to tear off so many pages of sketchbook. So I just started working on just regular printing paper because that, that was when I when I remember all this shit, I just I feel so sorry for my younger self. But uh, I remember that. I had this conscious thought that, wow, I would love to try a sketchbook, but I'm not so good. I'm not that good to keep a sketchbook. You need to have this sort of standard uh, to be able to to draw in a sketchbook because if you draw something less than perfect, you would have to tear off the page and, and throw it away in the trash bin. And right now I understand how toxic this mindset is, but for me, Back in those days, it was the norm. It was the the standard that my friend uh, imposed on me and that I agreed to take on. There is my responsibility in in accepting this way, and I'm I'm, I'm not uh, trying to uh, to play victim here. I was uh, an active participant in this, but still, still, I was. Um, I think. She, she was good. I must say, she was good with her artwork, and she didn't draw as much as I did. Like, I could finish 20 or 30 pictures in a month. I would just go a picture a day. And she would spend a week or a month on one single page. And, of course, she was vigorous about eliminating all kinds of mistakes. So she, she aimed at perfection. And her artworks, they were good. But she also hated the process so much. She would also spend months without drawing a single picture if her previous effort had failed somehow. And I would, well, sometimes I also had such breaks, but those breaks would last like days. And, and then I, I started painting and drawing again because this is my passion. This is like breathing to me. So if I can't draw, it's like, Part of my soul cannot breathe if I can't draw. I express so many emotions of mine with, with, with drawing, right? And I had a second friend, too. And a second friend, I met her later at university. We started, we studied together at an architectural academy. And she was the one who told me, hey, your, your, work, your work doesn't have to be perfect. I see the emotion here. I see the intention here. I, I see how cool your characters are. Well, yeah, there are some shortcomings in your anatomy, and maybe you don't know how to draw this, like this angle of torso or head. But it doesn't matter. You, you're gonna be better next time. But 
this one is good. It's not perfect, but it's good. I like it. And I remember I was so shocked when she introduced me to this kind of second approach towards growth. Because before that, I personally, I felt ashamed of liking some of my pictures. I did like them. I, I like most of my pictures because I just love my art and my, my pictures that are like my children or something. And I remember once I uploaded some of my sketches online, um, that first friend came to me and she said, like, how could you upload that? Uh, you should be ashamed of doing that. You should have worked on your mistakes more. And I was like, I like it that way. I don't want to spend any more time tweaking this picture. I think I'm done with it. I'm going to just paint the next one and, and be better about it. And she was like, no, you're, ne you're never going to be better. You're never going to grow if you don't try and make each picture you draw perfect. And that was toxic perfectionism, but I didn't know the word at the time. I was not very mentally healthy. And that second friend, when she told me that I am allowed to like my artwork and I am allowed to not feel shame for that, and why would you throw away your sketches? That was another thing. I thought that if that was normal. When I crumble up the page and I throw it down the bin, there he goes because I don't like it. And she once saw that, my second friend, and said, like, why would you do that? That was a good sketch. You could you could have kept it for some ideas in the future. And I was like, could I? But it was not perfect. And she said, like, there's no such thing as perfect art. And I was I was so shocked, actually. But then I went on thinking. At first I I forbade myself from throwing away a single sketch. And I had this rule for many, many years until I understood that I was cured from that toxic mindset that I um, had imposed on myself. Uh, and now, from time to time, I can throw away a sketch. Like, if it's total trash, I can look at it and I think, well, I don't think I'm going to use it. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> it, it goes down the bin. But mostly, mostly I don't do that. I keep all my sketches, most of them. And I, I managed to have so many sketchbooks, and I keep them as messy as I want to because they're my territory, they're free territory, they're they're the territory where I can explore myself, where I can experiment, and where I can be free of any limitations as an artist. Um, what could be an antidote to such a mindset um, which says that you're not going to grow as an artist if you don't hate your work? You're not going to grow as an artist if you love something that you've done years ago. Um, I think that many artists struggle with loving their own work and seeing it as worthy and important and in general, accept it, accept their way. And many, many artists can't do this just because there's this extra value attached to this negative mindset. And this value says growth. This, va th this says you're not going to grow. It, it is a huge fear for many artists. Like, you're not going to be able to grow if you love your pictures, if you love your paintings, if you're not ashamed of something you did 20 years ago. You're not going to grow. And that is. That is uh, this like sad and ridiculous at the same time, because if you're looking at something you did 20 years ago and you find it cringy, it means that you have grown, you have grown, you you can do better now. But at the same time, it's sad because if you if cringe is all that you see in your early artwork, it means that you don't appreciate the path that you have walked to be here. It's not like you teleported from your childhood to your current years with your current skills. It was a huge, huge path in front of you. And you walked it. And you had all the power to walk. And you had all the determination to, to stay on the path, to not stop and say, like, okay, I'm not good enough. And I guess this is not for me then. And you, you, you kept walking. 
And you kept doing that and you kept pursuing your goals and you got better, which is precisely uh, my point that, okay, I think I, I lost my thought here and I'm going to reframe this. My main idea here is that it's not the self-hate mindset that helps you grow. Basically, the self-hate mindset is a, a huge stone that you keep tied to your legs. And despite that, you still go on, go forward, and you still grow. And I think that you actually grow out of love and out of passion for what you do. Because this love for art, and for making art, makes you make it more, make more art. And this passion you have for art makes you want to sit down and draw and sketch and paint and, and develop and learn and, and watch tutorials on YouTube. Like, it drives you to be better. But not because you hate so much what you do now that you want to outgrow this hatred. If you hate your art, you're, you're never going to outgrow your hatred because there will always be someone who is better than you, which is good. If you're confident about your art, you see all those great artists as your teachers because if you are better than everybody else, it is a very sad place to be because it means that you can't learn from anyone. You're better than everyone else. What else can you learn? And it's such a lonely place too. But when there are plenty of people who are better than you, who, who know some tricks, who know some techniques, there's always such a great place for growth. And my main point in this video is that you mainly grow out of love and out of passion and also out of curiosity. So whenever I see someone else who is better than me, who can do color better than me, or who can paint better, or who can understand anatomy better than me, I always, I approach this situation with curiosity and, and love for my own path. And I'm also curious, like, okay, this person can do great art. I wonder how they do it. Or I wonder what I can learn from them. Or I wonder what my art is going to be like if I try this or that technique. So I try and, and implement some of their techniques. And I see, like, oh, well, that works. That works fine. And some other technique, oh, maybe this technique doesn't suit my art art style very much, but I'll have to develop a new style, or like a try out a new style to be able to use this technique. And it's always, always such an adventure. So I think that actually our growth is, is a place of adventure and it comes out of our passion and honest curiosity, like almost childlike, because we, we are big children, basically. We artists. And this kind of negative self-talk and self-hatred and shame about liking your own work, even if it's imperfect, it is just something that hinders us on the way. It just, it doesn't enable us to grow. It prevents us from growing sometimes because it makes us stop making art. On some days we feel so, so negative about our own art so that we cannot sit and enjoy ourselves like my friend did. She would literally spend months without making a single sketch or like making sketches and just um, throwing them all in the dustbin because she didn't like what what she wanted. Um, yeah, so I think that that was my point. And I must say I know that there are people who strongly believe that you're not allowed to love your art or like your art which makes you arrogant or something, and that you're not going to grow if you like your art. <laughs> and I know that for some people it is very personal. Maybe they've also had friends like that or teachers like that or parents like that, but they've had this inner um, impulse to challenge this opinion. And I would love to hear from the, those people too. I would love to hear from you and maybe... If you want to oppose my opinion, if you want to challenge that too, if you want to lay out some arguments for me why I should be hating my own art, I don't know. I don't know. You can write me in the comment section. But 
I just wanted to say that for other people like me who may be caught caught up with this kind of toxic attitude towards your own art from a teacher or a parent or a friend, I would love to, you know, to be a helping hand for you or to be a helping mind for you. I would like to just say that I am with you and I understand you, where, where you're coming from. And I just really, really wish that you could see the other side. And it's much easier on the other side, and it's much more enjoyable on the other side, because I don't hate any any artwork that I make. I love them all, and some of them I like more, some of them I like less, but at least I have respect for every sketch that I make, because it just means one thing. It means I showed up. It means that I was there to see it in practice. And that's the most important part of it, that I could have chosen to do anything else. I could have chosen to play a video game or binge watch a series or something. But I showed up at my table and opened up a sketchbook and did that sketch. And it's a small brick um, on this path to eat, like a path to becoming a better artist. And I do believe that that's where real growth is. The healthy, the, the love, and the positivity, and the curiosity. That's what makes it um, a cool adventure. A really, really cool adventure. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, like, subscribe, push the notification bell. Um, write a comment or two. Um, I'm still pretty new to YouTube, uh, pretty new to uh, these kind of long video formats, so tell me whether you liked it or not, and maybe I'll come to you with another one. Bye-bye.